The Met turned its guns on me because I dared to challenge them on a number of issues and were not prepared to stop shooting until I was completely obliterated. Jennifer Izeko joined the Independent Police Complaints Commission with an enviable CV. She was entirely robust professionally until her integrity, she says, was shattered. In 2017, the woman responsible for scrutinizing the police became the subject of a criminal investigation by them for doing her job. She's spoken to Channel 4 News exclusively in her first interview since the case concluded in 2021. Were there times where you thought, this is going to break me? Oh, God, yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. And perhaps one of the hardest moments for me was four and a half years in, the one line that was sent to my solicitor, tell your client we've stopped now. For weeks and months after that, I just couldn't stop crying. It was that just the total disrespect, the total dismissal. In her role as commissioner at the police watchdog, Jennifer Ezekiel was accused of willfully abusing her power. We need to go back to 2011 for some context. Mark Duggan had been shot by police in Tottenham. His death sparked riots across the country. The police say they'd had intelligence that attacks against them were being planned to avenge Mr. Duggan's death. Which brings us to the London borough of Harrow on the 4th of September 2011. The police described serious public disorder at a block of flats around here. Edric Kennedy McFoy, a firefighter who stopped at the scene, was tasered and alleged he'd been a victim of racial discrimination. He was paid damages by the Met and received an apology. The IPCC launched an investigation that Mrs. Eckor took on when she became commissioner. She was accused of perverting the course of justice by the three officers she was investigating. The officers claimed that she'd suppressed documents that would have cleared their names. And so the IPCC investigation collapsed and Jennifer Isacor had to step down as commissioner. Then, during the investigation, it was revealed that the Met had had the evidence all along. Ultimately, all charges against Mrs. Eckel were dropped by the Crown Prosecution Service in 2019. The officers, by the way, had also been cleared of the allegations against them years before. What my case did was it actually sent out a very clear message of what can happen if you try and hold the Met to account. What's that message? Well, you know what, that, that will come after you. Channel 4 News can reveal that the Metropolitan Police spent over a million pounds pursuing a criminal investigation against Jennifer Isacor, a black woman responsible for holding them to account. I think that was just, uh, among other things, a, a monumental waste of taxpayers' money because fundamentally they knew that what they were accusing me of I hadn't done. And it goes to the heart of a, a culture that seems to respond to challenge and criticism in a specific way. We've also obtained previously unseen documents that call into question an allegation that she'd recommended charges of racism against the three officers without evidence, as well as transcripts from her interviews with Police Scotland officers. The Met passed the case to Police Scotland for the sake of transparency and independence. One of the white officers, in a complaint to the force, accused Jennifer Ezeko of racism against him. He says, it's now clear to me that the actions taken against me by Jennifer Ezekiel were motivated by racial discrimination and or racial stereotyping. Yeah, that was, uh, that was interesting. It, it was the way that that was termed, the way that the word racism was turned in that way. I'm not saying that prejudice doesn't exist on all sides of the framework. How much of what happened to you, Jennifer, do you think is about race? Well, I haven't... Um, gone through my life sort of waving a race card, you know, if that's what people want to say, you know, you know well, you would say it's about race, wouldn't you? The maliciousness with which they came of after me, I, I think it's two things, and we see this time and time again in the Met, you know, I think there's something about sexism and there's something about racism. She had two police interviews in total. Channel 4 News has seen the transcripts. 
In one exchange, the detective repeatedly asks Jennifer Ezekiel if she'd met with Mr. Kennedy McFoy during the investigation. It's put to her in various forms. Then, prior to this investigation commencing, had you ever met or communicated with Mr. Kennedy McFoy in any capacity? In a second interview the following year, the same questioning. She says, no, I didn't at any point meet Mr. McFoy on my own or have any other connection with Mr. McFoy. I'm kind of thinking, hold on, would you be asking these questions if we weren't both black? And, and the very presumption, you know, that my entire challenge was based on the fact that he was black, I was black, and so, you know, obviously I had a thing in his favour as opposed to any sort of consideration that actually I was doing my job, uh, which was to challenge, to scrutinise, to, to be robust in that. In fact, she says she was persistently accused of making the Kennedy McFoy case about race. The detectives press her on whether she'd suggested that the officers had made false assumptions about Mr. Kennedy McFoy being related to gang activity based on his race. The detectives ask, which evidence supports your comment that the police assumed that Mr. Kennedy McFoy was related to gang activity? She reminds them of a comment that one of the officers had previously made in court. The officer had said, I couldn't say Mr. Kennedy McFoy had anything to do with the party. The party was all black. He was black. He'd driven through the cordon and I had to make a quick risk assessment. The Met claim that you'd applied pressure to investigators to accept their analysis. Yeah. I scrutinised, I challenged. And I asked people to go back and look at the evidence. But bear in mind, this was a second investigation of this particular case. The Met had carried out its own investigation. We had challenged that because we didn't think it was robust. This was an additional investigation. And so in this, absolutely, we wanted to make sure that the facts were known. And I did. I did challenge. And that's what I was paid to do. This year, Mrs. Eckel found out about a new piece of evidence. Actually, one of the senior officers at the time had complained that one of the officers who was involved in this was actually accused of making monkey noises um, as they approached the party. Now, we didn't know that. And, and fundamentally, at the bottom of this case was the fact that the Met always said, I brought the racism agenda into it. I didn't. The officer denies the allegations. So I think Baroness I think Casey's I, review into Met culture stated that the organisation meets criticism with defensiveness and denial. My experience of working with the Met around discrimination cases was that unless they'd heard an officer use the N or the P word or any other word, as far as they were concerned, they weren't compared, prepared to consider that race was an issue. Is your case, do you think, an example of structural racism? Absolutely. It's, I, I think it's an example of, of leadership racism. It's leaders who shape that. It's leaders who define those policies. It's leaders who decide whether or not we're going to prioritise changing that approach, because actually that approach is discriminating against a certain group of people. It's leaders who should cast a vision of what it could be and make sure that they're taking people along with them on that vision. We put the evidence and allegations in this piece to the Metropolitan Police and Police Scotland. The Met told us that it would be inappropriate to comment on the allegations owing to a potential civil claim by Mrs Eckor. Channel 4 News was told by her lawyer that this claim had a time limit and won't proceed. On the cost of the investigation, the Met said, the allegations made were serious and it's only right that they be subject to a full investigation in accordance with the guidelines for charging for policing services. And on leadership racism, they said, we accept Baroness Casey's findings and we're responding to them. It says its new plan will reform culture and systems to embed the values of policing by consent. Police Scotland says it's received no complaints about the investigation that was carried out and that the Crown Prosecution Service acknowledged the exemplary approach to the investigation by Police Scotland officers. Jennifer Ezekor now runs her own company, working with organisations to foster compassionate and inclusive leadership.
for me, this is not about revenge. I'm not, it's not about getting money off the Met or anything. It's about how do you do this differently? Um, how do you make sure that when we think about the Met, we think about all those officers out there daily who are putting their lives on the line? Mrs Eckle tells us she's seen the worst of policing through this personal experience, but much more often sees the best of it in her work with forces now.